If you can't watch the full podcast, watch those cast clips to get the best in podcasting in our country. I want to start with perhaps our neighbor, mm-hmm. right? Pakistan. Only because a friend of mine called me. Tere ko pata hai, Imran Khan ko jail hone wali hai. Acha. Um, and then as of today, he is already jailed. He so, is. I figured we would start with <coughs> Imran Khan. His role in Pakistan as this sort of uh, renegade PM figure. um and subsequent rise fall and uh, the state of uh, instability that pakistan has had now for in since its inception mm-hmm. but particularly let's talk about imran khan we know that he's a cricketer right how was he able to change pakistan's politics and why do people still love him despite not having too much to say or prove from a geopolitical or a diplomatic standpoint so imran khan is this great cricketer one of the all time greats he was uh, probably pakistan's best ever cricket captain he was able to bring these this bunch of people cricketers from different backgrounds together and mold them into a fighting unit and his last act was winning the world cup 1992 world cup mm. so the people of pakistan lo- pakistan love him and, and admire him a lot for that uh, so c- he clearly has the leadership qualities uh, the qualities that you need in, in a leader to be able to bring people together for a common cause common vision and and you know uh, take them forward and and win so he has that and he obviously we know that he always had these political ambitions so mm-hmm. as soon as he retired he started working on building a cancer hospital in the memory of his mother mm-hmm. and he succeeded in doing that and eventually yeah he stepped into politics and his plank his entire platform was was anti imperialism i remember him saying a long time ago on some bbc or something interview that he did not want any aid money from the us any support from the us it's poisoned money that's what he said mm. right and he eventually di- did become the prime minister and he took pakistan in a, into the arms of china so at that time uh, the americans had kind of uh, you know kind of lost interest in pakistan for for some time and pa- and, and china was making inroads with the china pakistan economic corridor cpec and so on so imran khan tried his best to woo china and and you know bring the two nations closer and uh, there was talk about the two nations being the iron brothers and all that uh, but we have to understand one thing about pakistan then that one thing is that the the power center is never where it seems to be see in every nation especially in democracies there are extra electoral extra governmental centers and networks of power yeah. that that you will see even in democracies and pakistan is not a democracy pakistan yeah, yeah. You, you've said in your I, i actually was about to purchase a course where i was looking at some of the things you said uh-huh. you said that pakistan is a vassal state of the us yes so how is yeah So what's a vassal state? I mean, I use the French pronunciation vassal. vassal okay, what's okay, a vassal okay. state? It's it's a it's a satellite state. It's a state that has lost sovereignty to a much more powerful nation, and it it is allowed to keep on governing itself. But certain policies, etc., are strongly mediated, influenced by the more powerful nation. So, for example, Pakistan. Why was Pakistan created in the first place? It was created as a counterbalance to India and to serve certain geopolitical interests, long-term interests of the UK, of of the British. Mm. Now, the British they eventually became a second-rate power after essentially after 1956, the Suez Crisis, and the US became the dominant power. The dominant power mm. became the US in 1944-45 itself. But uh, the British Empire, center of power. moved from london to washington somewhere around this time mm. and then pakistan came into the arms and the embrace of the us and the us also saw a great amount of utility in pakistan as a counterbalance to india because india was going to pro ussr and also to keep the ussr and its uh, its uh, you know tentacles away from the warm waters of the indian ocean mm. so a lot of interests were at stake over here and pakistan and the us had have this uh, you know this agreement which was signed in the 1950s which kind of kind of defines the road map of pakistan being a us tributary or vassal state mm. so uh, pakistan would offer its its territory to the us to serve american geopolitical per- interests in mm-hmm. exchange the americans would give pakistan aid in terms of uh, money arms ammunition and all that and that played out very well in the 1980s during the soviet Afga- in, uh, invasion of afghanistan right. where the us uh, funded the mujahideen which were a proxy force to fight the soviets mm-hmm. and the soviets were never uh, were, were never able to cross the pakistan border from where all this terrorism and all that was coming in and that's why they eventually had to withdraw from afghanistan so pakistan is a us proxy uh, and 
and it was a Chinese proxy as well. So the thing is that when it comes to Pakistan, the real center of power is the army ISI complex, the mm. army, the generals that run the army, and the ISI, which is the intelligence uh, arm of the of the army, you could say, and also certain very powerful people, you know, the old uh, landlords or whatever you want to call them, the, the oligarchs of Pakistan. The, the, the oligarchs, let's say. The zamindars. Zamindars yeah. and all that. Those powerful yeah. families. So it's it's all intertwined. And that's the real power center. Mm -hmm. And they have this so-called democratic process in which some prime minister comes to power. And no prime minister, if I if I remember correctly, has ever completed his or her term properly, that, that sort of thing. So when it comes to Imran Khan coming to power, he, never, he was never in power. He was, see, in Pakistan, the person who is officially in power is the scapegoat. When things go wrong, and they will... You're gonna blame it all on that person, and then, right. and then get rid of the person. Maybe hang him like Zia, like Zia Huck did to Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, or jail him like Imran Khan is currently in or jail. Assassinate and, like Benazir Bhutto. Or assassinate like Benazir Bhutto. So it, it's 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 a poisoned seed. It's a, it's a it's a seed that doesn't give you any power. It gives you status. Okay, I became the prime minister of Pakistan, mm. but at the end of the day, you're gonna be bumped off, or you're gonna be you know blamed for whatever goes wrong, and things will always go wrong in Pakistan because the nation. It's owned by the army. The people have no control over what's happening. And the people are essentially resources, expendable resources. So that's how it is. So from my perspective, I just don't care who is in power officially in Pakistan. Who is the prime minister? I don't know. I don't care. Mm. It doesn't matter. The policies never change. What really matters is where is the uh, where does the uh, Pakistan army's allegiance lie currently? Mm. So the Pakistan army is, is, a, is a mercenary organization. And really? They, absolutely. 100%. The, the armed forces of a country as big and as powerful as Pakistan are a mercenary army to other powers in the world? Absolutely. So, for example, 1980s, 1990s, we had the end 2000s, 2010s also, we, and, and, and even now, we have Pakistan ter Pakistani terrorism that's operating in Jammu and Kashmir. In uh -huh. the 90s and 2000s and etc., it was, it was a tremendous amount of terrorism that was flowing into India. All of that was funded and financed by the U.S., all right? There's no question about it. Hmm. There is absolutely no question about it that the U.S. funded and financed Pakistani terrorism in India for clo for more than two decades. But hasn't it been an ally on, on our faces for many, many years now? So that's how the world works, you know. You're gonna work together in some things, and you're gonna, you know, you're gonna stab people in the back as well, yeah. and and you you keep on piling the pressure so that you can coerce your so-called ally to do certain things. Mm. That's how it works. So it's at the end of the day, when when you when you take a realistic approach and a realistic view of the world, it's all about power. If you like this clip, make sure you subscribe to those cast clips.